Hello, my name is Christian Mayer from Düsseldorf, Germany, Associate Editor for Jackie P. We are here in Boston at the Society's annual Hadrism meeting and with me is Dr. Vivek Reddy from New York and uh, we are going to share and talk about some late-breaking signs regarding the impact of pulse field ablation uh, and uh, atrial arrhythmia burden mm -hmm. at one year. Vivek, please tell us uh, what is key about the study and what are the major findings? Sure. So first, thanks for having me, Christian. Um, the, um, the ADVENT trial we, pu we previously published, it compared pulse fit ablation to regular ablation, or let's say thermal ablation, either radio frequency or cryo. And as previously published, the top line results were that outcomes were similar in terms of effectiveness. And, um, and so that was the feeling. Pulse field works as well as thermal, but not necessarily better. Okay. The end point of what determines success or failure in the ADVENT trial was the 30 seconds of AFib. Now that, and that's, by the way, consistent with every other trial that's been yeah. in our field. The problem is that 30 seconds really has no physiology behind it. And we know from more recent trials that actually it's not 30 seconds that matters. It's actually the burden of atrial fibrillation. Yeah. The more burden of atrial fibrillation you have after an ablation procedure, there's a threshold above which quality of life starts dropping, healthcare utilization increases, et cetera. Yeah. So it's in that context we decided to do a secondary analysis of the advent data where we would look at number one, is there a cutoff of burden uh, from our patient, or yeah. aggregate patient cohort yeah. that actually tracks with clinical outcomes and symptoms? And number two, if we use that cutoff, do we see any difference between groups? Yeah. So that was the goal of the sub-analysis. Um, we, we took the 600 patient cohort, aggregated it, and then we used a cutoff of 0.1% as well as 10% and looked uh, along these. And what we found was that at 0.1% seemed to be an important cutoff. If you had less than 0.1% residual burden, minimal symptoms, minimal healthcare utilization. Mm. Above, it was more. Yeah. So that was, we believe, more relevant uh, clinical, a uh, relevant cutoff that has clinical basis behind it. Yeah. Then we did the second part of the analysis. We said, okay, let's use 0.1% burden and then um, look at, see if there's any difference between groups. And lo and behold, there actually was. The success rate with pulse field ablation mm -hmm. using 0.1% burden cutoff was 82%. With thermal, it was 75%. And that was statistically significant between the two groups. So actually using a more relevant clinical endpoint, we found pulse field was superior to thermal ablation. Yeah, amazing. So congratulations once more for this uh, important landmark trial. And in particular, this, this uh, sub-study that has been presented today here at Hatrism. Um, what, what are your um, thoughts about uh, future steps, uh, clinical implications, and maybe also some, some limitations? Yeah, no, it's a very important point. I mean, let's talk about the limitations first. Yeah. So we didn't have continuous monitoring in this. We had intermittent monitoring. Yeah. The best would be to have continuous monitoring. Yeah. So I think that is a limitation. But we're comparing between groups. So it was the same limitation in the RF, in the uh, thermal group as the pulse field group. So I think, relatively speaking, I think it's still valid data. Now, in terms of future implications, I think it's really important. You know, our field has been using these endpoints that I think have not been, you know, sort of um, grounded in, in any sort of clinical reality. Or, uh, and so I think moving to a burden endpoint that actually has some clinical basis is important. And I think minimally, all future trials should have some sort of a burden endpoint, either as the primary endpoint or some part of a composite. Uh, so that's my feeling. I think it's the feeling of a lot of us. The, the question is how you operationalize it, what kind of uh, monitoring you have to get the highest quality burden data. I think that's the, the stuff that yeah. we still need to figure out. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. We're happy to publish this in Jack. So once again, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you. We're honored.